Indira Gandhi National Open University presents a program entitled How to Develop Good Study Habits. If a child is taught a systematical approach in childhood itself, it can lead life independently and efficiently later. Same thing applies in academic activity also. If the students are taught good study habits, in later stages they develop their own study habits or methods, set their targets and become their own guides. Many of us do poorly in our studies because we have never learned how to study. Elementary teachers usually do not spend time in helping children to acquire study skills. Moreover, they tend to believe that it is the job of the high school teachers. Ironically, many high school teachers do not spend time in this area because they assume that their students would have already acquired the study skills. So all along the way, we don't acquire an opportunity to learn appropriate study skills. Let us examine the study habits of some of the students. Nero always listens to music while studying. Anil starts his study before his examinations and spend the whole night in craving answers. Anil also takes precautionary measures to avoid sleep. Anil takes pills and lots of tea to avoid sleep. Vinita studies consistently and starts preparing for examinations well in advance. Now the question arises whether we should always relax and study or we should start studying only before terminal examinations or we should study consistently. Of course, tensions and concentrations vary with different individuals. But we cannot deny the fact that studying is essentially hard work and students who are not prepared to make appropriate efforts are wasting their time. So three vital points need attention. When to study, where to study and how much time to spend to study. Though they may appear elementary, they are vital in building good study habits. As in the case of Anil, who studies just before the terminal examination or an announced test. He studies the whole night and cream answers. All of us have probably done this at least once or twice. As a good student, Vinita plans a study time and spread it out. This regular plan prevents her from confusion and helps her to retain information for a longer period of time. Of course, the ability to plan is not something we are born with. It is a set of skills which must be learned. In a classroom situation, for example, if it is a straightforward informational lecture, a study session right after the lecture will be useful to review the notes and check whether it has been understood. If it is a seminar, or a discussion, study session just before helps to make an effective contribution in the classroom. Ideally, we should be able to study anywhere, in a quiet library, or on a crowded bus, or on train, but many of us cannot shut off our minds from distractions. For study, a bed or an easy chair are very enticing, but once you lie down, the ensuing sleep is inevitable. Some of the conditions for study are The place should be well lit and properly ventilated and neither too hot nor too cold. The best position for study is to sit upright at a table or a desk. How much time to spend on study will depend on the subject chosen and how well we know it. It is therefore unrealistic to set a hard and fast rule about the amount of time to be spent on a specific subject. However, we can practice overlearning. This will help us to retain information over a longer period of time. Overlearning happens when we continue practicing activities, exercises, etc. even after we think we mastered them. Another important thing, leisure and recreation are vital. We should find a time slot for this also in our timetable. So, good luck. You were listening to a program, How to Develop Good Study Habits. 
The narrators were Sangameshwar Rao, Rashmi Kumar. Scripted and produced by Sangameshwar Rao. This program was brought to you by Indira Gandhi National Open University.